What's going on, everybody? And welcome to another Angle of Pursuit podcast, your fantasy football uh, home over at fakepixing.com. I am your host, Kyle Robert. You follow me on Twitter at NotoriousKRO. With me to break down week 13 to look ahead to the week 14 waiver wire ads, it's Brian Twining. What's up, Brian? What's going on, Kyle? I, I'm i stoked to finally get into the fantasy football playoffs here or for those that have the early beginnings. But these are like the most crucial ads that you're going to have going forward. Yep. And uh, this week we're doing it a little bit differently. Uh, we're going to play a little buy or sell with some names that are um, going to be talked about a lot um, in a d- few different places. I think this might be a, a good way, especially because right now these players are going to be the difference between you potentially, uh, you know, making and moving on in the playoffs and and not and picking up the wrong player and and thinking maybe I, I don't know, maybe I got something here and then realizing you don't. Um, that could cost you too. So you don't want to, you don't want to go in aggressive. You don't want to over bid on somebody that you can't use and you know, vice versa. Um, so we have some names. Let's start at quarterback and we'll start with Mr. Jalen hurts, who is only rostered in 3% of leagues, uh, came in after Carson benched, um, uh, uh, looked pretty good. Five of 12, 109 yards, had a touchdown also had an INT, um, definitely has the mobility with his legs, adds that nice rushing floor on a week to week basis. I guess we'll, we'll keep an eye on what's, what's going on in Philly, but are you potentially adding Jalen hurts for a playoff run in your fantasy football league? If I need him for the first round of the playoffs, I in no way want any part of that quarterback situation as they're going to be playing the new Orleans saints. Uh, so I want no piece of that, but after that, they're going to get Arizona and Dallas, which Arizona has been good against the past, not great, and they're definitely beatable, And if, especially with a mobile guy like Jalen Hurts if he were to hang on to the job. And then I'm going up against the Cowboys defense in the what would be the championship game in most leagues. I think that could offer some great potential there. Um, Not to toot my own horn too much, Brian. There was a little uh, – but, but, um a little thing we talked about in the in the um, before the season started, <laughs> and I thought we, we we were making some bold calls, and we decided that it was going to be a little too bold. But I did have a Jalen Hurts is going to be a fantasy championship winning quarterback, and my God, um, I'm going to try not to hurt myself trying to pat myself on the back. But <laughs> if this comes to fruition, like uh, my whole season's made because of that call. That's set uh, up good. I added I uh I played him in a super flex dynasty league thinking, well, can't can't kill me. I'm trying to tank a little bit. He ends up starting. I I, I it's, it's very on brand for me this year. But uh I'm I'm optimistic about him. I'm if I own if I have a quarterback that I'm fine with and I have some flexibility on the back end of my bench, I'd like to add him. I'd like to see, as you mentioned, the New Orleans matchup isn't the greatest, but it also is gonna provide a plenty of opportunity for them to have to throw more, have to do more in, in getting Ertz and Goddard and Jalen Rager and Travis Fulham. Like the pieces are starting to come back together and the offense is actually somewhat healthy. And But to behind that beaten up offensive line, if Hertz is more mobile, able to move better and not getting hit as much, um, I'm hoping he can be a better option. We'll see what the Eagles do. Um, they have They have some very big decisions to make and uh, I stole him for a song in, in my dynasty uh, rookie draft, and I'm very happy to happy to have him. Uh, let's talk about some running backs, and we'll start in New York where Ty Johnson, not Frank Gore, not LaMichael P. Ryan, not any of these guys, not Le'Veon Bell. It was Ty Johnson who came through in a big way, 104 yards and a touchdown, also caught uh, two passes for 13 yards uh, has the Seattle Seahawks who just gave up 115 yards to Wayne Gallman and the LA Rams. Now both those games are on the road the next two weeks. And well, uh, Sam Darnold is still the quarterback and my God, that ending, <laughs> my oh, that God, that horrible. ending. Um, Williams deserved to be fired after that. Yeah. I mean, that was, Hey, you're going to get fired at the end of the season. We appreciate you taking the brunt of this. Um, <laughs> <laughs> for, for letting us tank for Trevor because yeah Trevor Lawrence is is the real deal I I mean watching that game you know side sidetrack abide but um that game on uh on Saturday night was I, I'm I'm he still has it but it's just he does some things that are very frustrating anyways uh 
Are you buying or are you selling Ty Johnson as somebody you should be adding to play as a fantasy running back in the next two weeks? If I'm in a PPR league, I would be, you know, I would be putting up a substantial amount of my fab for Ty Johnson, especially if we get some further news about Frank Gore's concussion that he sustained here, because the only other option back there for the Jets is Josh Adams, who in no way is going to take any passing game work. And we know the Jets, they're going to be trailing in these next two upcoming games. So that means tons of passing. It's going to be lots of pressure on Sam Darnold, which possibly means lots of dump offs. And the offense has looked okay the past couple mm-hmm. of weeks. So if he's a starting running back looking at 15 to 20 touches, hell yeah, I'm going to add him. Yeah. If you need a running back, uh, I think he, you know, obviously we're going to talk about another guy next that, that is a lot rostered in a lot more leagues. So if you can't add him, I, I think he would be my priority. Uh, but if you need a running back and you're looking and you're, you're scraping, you're, you know, you're looking for table scraps and, um, Ty Johnson is somebody that I think could be interesting, especially against Seattle, who, um, as long as the jets can keep it somewhat close, they can keep the running game going. Um, and who knows what we'll see, but I'm, I'm, he's a guy that's performed well before he's done it. You know, this isn't his first time kind of on the fantasy landscape, had some time with Detroit. Um, You know, I don't think from a long term perspective, he's anybody I really want to hitch my wagon to. But I think for the next week or two could be a a player to take a look at Uh, the aforementioned player that I was saying that was a lot rostered in a lot more leagues. It's Mr. Cam Akers, who we told you to pick up last week when he was about 20 something percent. Uh, Now he's at 53 He's coming off of 72 yards and a touchdown on 21 carries against Arizona. Um now I'm ready for Sean McVay to pull the rug out from under our feet, uh, but he's gone 84 yards in a touchdown, 72 yards in a touchdown, and back-to-back weeks. Um, you know, McVay's kind of had a three-horse monster, and depending on the week, decides that he's going to play somebody else over Darrell Henderson or Malcolm Brown or Cam Akers or whatever. But um, Akers look great. The offense is still running the ball incredibly well. Yep. Um, and if if he gets the volume down the stretch, this guy could win uh, fantasy championships for a lot of teams. So he is somebody that I'm absolutely trying to get this week if I missed out last week. Yeah, for sure. It, uh, I added him in two in two separate leagues. Uh, actually, one of them two weeks ago and, and another last week, just kind of anticipating kind of, you know, handing over the keys to this guy because he is the most explosive guy there. Um, Daryl Henderson, he got banged up last game, but he's, He's not he's not the athlete that Cam Akers is, and we all know about Malcolm Brown, Michael Brown, whatever Brown is back there playing running back. I never remember his name. Uh Cam Akers Brown is the guy for the old. yeah. Cam Akers is the guy for the Rams. And yes, if I can get him, I want him. Yep. Um, I like I like adding him for sure. Um, another player who is widely available, um, probably third of the players that we've talked about. Uh, but Peyton Barber. Um, Antonio Gibson, we're recording this, um, in the second half of the Steelers, uh, Washington game. So, uh, we'll see what's up with Antonio Gibson left the game with an injury. Um, Peyton Barber, I don't love him. And obviously JD McKissick from a passing game standpoint is the best option there, but between the tackles around the goal line, he's probably going to see some work. And if you're scrambling and needing, a running back due to injury or due to, you know, just being frustrated with your current options. I, I guess you could go there. Or are you buying or are you selling uh, Peyton Barber as an ad this week? Ah, oh, man. Honestly, for this for this upcoming week, I'd probably be selling him just because they're going to be playing San Francisco, who also likes to run the ball. And I know Washington's defense is good, but. Uh, I don't think they're going to be able to stop the Niners, which means that this game is going to be controlled by that San Francisco offense. It's going to be a lot more JD McKissick than it would Peyton Barber. He, he is going to vulture a touchdown here or there. Like we saw week one, but for the next for week 14, if I need a running back, I'm going to be adding those previous three guys that we, that we yeah. mentioned. Yeah. He's a sell for sure. Let me ask you this. If you need a, if you're in a non PPR league, are you adding Jordan Howard before Peyton Barber? No, I, I no, I can't. I can't go back to the pig, dude. I just, I just don't get that team. I nope. Yeah, yeah. 
but I don't know. I, I trust that <laughs> offense. But yeah, I I think they're both sells for sure. Uh, let's talk some wide receivers and, and we'll throw it way back with Mr. T.Y. Hilton, who uh, decided that week 12 was the time that he would realize that he's a fantasy relevant option again. Uh, maybe it's a Philip Rivers thing. I'm not really sure. Uh, he had on Sunday, eight catches on 11 targets and a touchdown. This is on the heels of four catches on five targets and a touchdown. Uh, the week prior, uh, 45% rostered. Are you buying the T Y Hilton resurgence? He's a sell for me. I, Oh, he's a, de- he's a definite sell just cause I watched a little bit of this game and he had those corners on ice skates, during this game, he, it's not like he was beating guys off the ball and just smoking people. It was just the way that these, these two teams matched up as Michael Pittman is still the alpha there. Like if they need a, if they need a jump ball, it's going to be going to Pittman, not T Y Hilton. And they're, they're next two opponents. The Raiders and the Texans are both, are both teams that you can run on. So I think Indianapolis goes more towards that kind of game plan. So he's a sell. Yeah. I, I'm not buying this resurgence. I'm not buying this volume. Cause I, I, Philip Rivers does not is not locked on to any one wide receiver. He, this has been a nice couple weeks, but I could see a Pittman game. I could see a Zach Pascal game. Um, if you own Hilton and he's one of your better options, then you know I don't mind deploying him. Um, but in, in the grand scheme of things, I just he's just he. I I don't trust the volume week to week. It's been two weeks, and we're in week thirteen where he's been. <laughs> Um, in- incredible. There's been a lot of like three for yep. 30, even on seven or eight targets. So, uh, a guy that I am actually buying, um, and that's Kiki Cutie. Um, and I know that's weird to say, uh, but I don't know what happened, but like with getting Bill O'Brien out of the picture, they realized that QT just because he's small doesn't mean he has to be close to the line of the scrimmage. Doesn't mean he has to go across the middle. Um, in fact, you know, this is per uh, Jared Smol- Marks, which uh, is a great follow, Smola DS um, on Twitter. So much good info. Uh, but in week 13, QT averaged 13.4 yards on his average depth of target, and he had 22% uh, of his targets were 20 plus yards downfield. Now, if you're wondering why that's important, that's basically what Will Fuller's been doing for the first 12 weeks. 13.3 average depth of target and 20% of his targets were 20 yards down the field. Now, you know, Houston had to throw to keep up in this game, but guess who they play in two weeks? Indianapolis. Guess who? Yep. Yeah, like they're they're going to throw and they're going to need somebody opposite Brandon Cooks. And Brandon Cooks is going to operate in that middle of the field, uh, uh, shorter underneath. Like, I don't, I I'm wondering if cooks has just lost a step in terms of his average depth of target, but, um, QT is somebody that I'm actually buying. And I, if, if he's going to see this kind of volume with this kind of, you know, depth with the, with the deep shots, with the potential touchdown upside, um, I think he's well worth your time. Yeah, he is a definite buy for me if if you're in need of a wide receiver. And and I wouldn't be scared of the matchup going up against the Bears because it's been two consecutive weeks now that they've been absolutely torched by the opposing quarterbacks. And neither of those guys are as athletic as Deshaun Watson being able to extend plays. So um, I really think that QT, if he is stepping into even a, a minor kind of portion of what Will Fuller was doing, he's going to see the volume that you want from the wide receiver position, especially going into the playoffs. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the bears this week, you don't love it, but like Brian said, you can take, you can take advantage of them. Then it back for the Colts, then Cincinnati, then my Tennessee Titans who just allowed <laughs> Baker Mayfield to have 400 yards and four touchdowns. Uh, uh, so, you know, up is down. I'm sorry, right Baker. Right. Yeah. Just keep talking shit about him, please. Like that, <laughs> it, it clearly fuels his fire. He's watching all of our so. videos just for just for some motivation, Brian. You're doing it. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I like I like the matchups. I, I like him down the stretch. And if you need wide receiver help, um, I think he makes a ton of sense. Uh, a guy who was basically unrostered, uh, Colin Johnson in Jacksonville. Um, this guy with Mike Glennon under center. Four catches for 66 yards on six targets. Four catches for 96 yards on eight targets. He's seeing volume. He's producing. Uh, he was a player that I really liked coming out of Texas. 
large physical guy yeah. has athleticism has a lot of things you like uh, out of an elite option and you know them the lot like Indy have a lot of pieces but with Glennon under center I think he fits really well and I'm I'm guessing there's some sort of rapport there, obviously with Chark and um, you know some of the other pieces working more with Gardner Minshew as the season started. So yep. um, there's there's a rapport there, there's volume there, and for a, a player who's widely available, um, if you need receiver help, I think he he's a buy. Like I would take QT over him, and I'd probably take TY. Like that would be close for me. Uh, but Colin Johnson, if you need receiver help and you're scrambling, I think he makes a ton of sense. Yeah, I think he's a buy over T.Y. Hilton and and just behind Kiki QT because Jacksonville, they're going to be trailing in pretty much the, the majority of the rest of their games in your playoffs, and they've been unafraid to throw the ball down the field. And Colin Johnson is probably their best like one-on-one -on -one guy with a defender in just a, pre, you know, a Hail Mary type situation. And I do think that there is something to the rapport that he and Mike Glennon have. So as long as Glennon is playing quarterback – Give me Colin Johnson playing for a team that's going to be losing and there's going to be tons of throws for, yep. for him to be able to eat. Yeah, no, I totally, totally agree. Last player on our list. If you were scrambling a tight end, Cole Komet could be the answer you are looking for. Um, you know, Mitchell Trubisky is his quarterback. You don't love that. <laughs> Uh, Brian and I both realized that uh, relying on a player who is Mitchell Trubisky is not the greatest. That being said, uh, things are looking up for Komet, who the Bears clearly like and clearly want to be, you know, utilizing. Um, if you look at kind of his snap share, it was like 30, 40 percent most of the season. Uh, but since week 10, it's it's it was up over 70. Yeah. And over the last two weeks, it's 79 and 78 percent, respectively. That means he's on the field. That means he's running routes. That means he is opportuning. Uh, he's he's an, an opportunity to score touchdowns, to put up points for your fantasy team. And for a tight end that's widely available, if you're frustrated with your option, if you don't have Travis Kelsey, Darren Waller or something like that, uh, Cole Komet could make a ton of sense. Yeah, I I'm buying this all all day. He was one of my favorite guys coming into this season, and it only took you know 12 weeks to finally get there, 13 weeks. But he's clearly a better option than Jimmy Graham right now. He's he could get down the field better. He's more athletic. We saw it in his touchdown catch yesterday, where he actually burned a guy to get into the end zone. And like we've said, he's he's been playing a lot more. Uh, this is a team they've got a nice a nice schedule coming up. They play Houston, who, you know, Tennessee Titans tight ends did really well. They play Minnesota, who allowed Jacksonville tight ends to have like I think 11 catches on them or something like that. And then he gets Jacksonville at the end of the season. So he's got nice weather games uh in your semifinals and your finals if you're able to make it there with him. Yep. Um I I am 100% on board with that. Uh Brian, before we get out of here, is there any players that you're looking at that you know, maybe you, you know, if you're, if you're, you're sitting in, you know, you have, you're finishing your buy or you're, you're, you're one of the top seeds. You're just trying to add in a little bit of protection. Obviously, you know, if you can get your handcuff for your running back, if you can do that kind of stuff, I think it makes sense. Adding defenses, you know, look at week 16, week at 17. Those, those can be moves that make a huge difference. Uh, for me, Donta Foreman is somebody that I think could make, could make a lot of sense. I don't expect Derrick Henry to get hurt at any point. But we don't expect a lot of these players to get hurt at any point. Is there anyone that come jumps to mind to you um, that you'd be saying, maybe take a look at this player and stash them now? Because in two weeks, when we're on this podcast. We're going to be talking about them as somebody that you need to be running to the waiver wire to pick up. So I'm going to be gross here and I'm going to talk about kickers real fast. But one thing that I always look right. at in terms of kicking is domes domes yeah. or good weather. So like for me, I have young way Koo in a bunch of leagues who has been an absolute monster, but he plays outdoors in a cold weather stadium is week 16. I believe they're playing Kansas city or something. Mm -hmm. So I want no part of that. So there's two guys that I'm looking at right now. Uh, Jake Elliott, who's only rostered in 14% of leagues on the Philadelphia Eagles who, yes, he hasn't been producing really well, but they're going to be playing Dallas whose defense is Kaka. So he's going to get opportunities. And then 
Kami Fairbairn for Houston. Yes, Kami I know he. Fairbairn. I know he missed a field goal this week, but he's had four, four of his last five games. He's had nine plus points, and in week sixteen they get Cincinnati. So there's going to be lots of points put up. This could be a blowout situation where at the end of the games they're just kicking field goals rather than going for it. So I'm I'm looking at stashing these guys either either this week or next week if I'm able to advance. It's gross to say, but it's the it, that's a winning move, unfortunately. Especially yeah. if you're in leagues where kickers are part of it, you need to be adding these pieces. Unfortunately, these players can be a ten to twelve to fourteen point swing for your fantasy team, and that could be the difference between you moving on or not. Yeah, and I know it's not fun, and you know if you want to work with your commissioner to to phase out kickers because they're the worst, I I get it, but. If you're in a league, kickers are part of it. Defenses are a part of it. Paying attention, preemptive ads to these players, these positions can make a lot of sense. So check out those, as Brian mentioned with Philly, um, you know, you could add Jake Ellie and the Eagles defense and be looking real pretty. Yep. Uh, Brian, that was a lot of fun. Obviously we, 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 uh, you know, we, we went through all the names. If there's somebody that we left out that you're curious about at FP AOP, Hit us up on our personal Twitter handles at Notorious Caro at Greasy Rules 14. Uh, we will be back on Thursday to take a look at the week 14 slate from a betting perspective. We'll also be live Sunday morning to try and help you set your lineups, help you win your fantasy leagues. For Brian Twining, I'm Kyle Robert, and we'll talk to you all next time. <laughs>